Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Space Webinar. And today we are going to be talking about everything you need to start a new software project. And this is specifically focusing on the startups. And I'm Michal Wink, a business development manager for Space, calling all the way from Munich, Germany. And um, I'm, I'm joined by Valerie, who is going to be introduced very soon. So we are going to be talking about the ways how Space can help your startup to succeed because uh, it covers pretty much the entire pipeline uh, for the software development. So that you can really get started very quickly with everything you need uh, to develop your next project. And just for the starters, very small housekeeping. So first of all, if you have any questions, just put them in, into the questions panel in YouTube, which you, which you can see um, on the right. I believe that's on the right. And that also works on Twitch. So we have a couple of colleagues who are going to be handling the questions as we go along. And at the end of the presentation, we're also going to have the live Q&A answering your questions together with Valerie. And of course, this session is going to be recorded. And it is going to be available on YouTube following the same link. And of course, we'll send you the recording afterwards. So if you miss anything, just yeah, anytime, you'll be able to watch it again and see what is happening. So with that, we'll get started. And uh, what is going to happen next is that um, we basically thought about how space can uh, help you as a startup founder and uh, how we can organize your work with the least possible number of uh, tools deployed. Because you probably want to get uh, started really quickly. You don't want to spend days on the deployments of uh, 10 or 15 tools from different vendors. And your software development team can start right away. So with that, we actually got my colleague Valerie uh, to transform to a startup founder. And Valerie is going to be founding a new startup, which is called the Galactic Travels Incorporated. And she's working with her team on getting them started really quick. And we actually got our colleague Martin Balioff to prepare the space instance for Valerie's startup, which we are going to be showcasing for you today. Valerie, welcome. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our space show today. Um, actually, I'm a space product marketing manager and I'm broadcasting also from Munich. So hi, everyone again. Um, I'm a PMM, but today I'm going to be playing the role of a young start startup founder. And I'm so excited about it. I've always dreamt about my own project. The idea of my startup is making interplanetary travel fun. To be honest, every company in the world is IT company today. So uh, when we are talking even about galactic travels, we come to the IT project with its standard pipeline and workflows. Uh, let's say we have an idea to create an app that allows to organize all the processes around galactic travels. The first thing we need to do is planning, as no good project starts without the proper planning. How can we organize the planning processes inside space, Misha? Oh, let me show you. So with that, we probably should switch to space. And without any further ado or any slide decks, let's just dive into that. So that is space, all in one integrated solutions for um, teams. And that's where it all starts with your day. You basically see your profile and your teams and the projects you're working on. But we are going to be able to dive into that very soon because the planning starts from the concept. And the concepts normally would be described as documents. And space is very well suited um, in order to describe um, like all kinds of projects or things you're working on. And documents can be um, personal. That is what you see on the screen, just in my profile. That's all the different documents I've been working on. Some of them belong to projects. Some of them are personal. And this is the one in the part of the project Blossom. We call it Project Blossom. And that is the project concept. So, First of all, we would uh, go ahead and create the concept. And uh, of course, we can edit the document in space. And you basically can go ahead and write all the smart ideas about how you would like to get the project started. And uh, interesting thing about this um, document editing is that it's fully collaborative. So if you have uh, a bunch of folks working on your startup, yeah, you can just get them um, to this uh, document and they can just brainstorm all ideas and put, put the information. That can be done in both rich text, which is the what you see is what you get editor, and then of course in the markdown as well, uh, if you're more on the development side. And with that, you just go to the preview and um, view the documents and share it with your colleagues. That is as easy as it gets in terms of the project concepts and uh, sharing that with your peers. Would it work for you, Valerie? 
Yeah, I think the documents are cool. However, I know that development teams um, doesn't <laughs> don't really like to work with the large text files. How can we transfer our vision document into more actionable format? Oh, I see. Even though I consider these documents to be rather short, I, I normally prefer to write much longer documents. But, but I see where I know that. From, so. I know that. <laughs> Yeah, okay. That, in this case, we can actually go ahead and uh, go with the next step of planning. So at least that is how it works in the project I was involved in, both in JetBrains and outside of JetBrains. You start with some concept, but then you basically need to break it down to some of the high-level plans, or in, in some companies that's called epics. And uh, for that, you, you generally would work with the, another type of document or another type of uh, brainstorming or the, um, or the prioritizing uh, process uh, in the checklist. So for example, this is the checklist for this project Blossom. And again, they can be personal or they can be uh, related to the um, to the project. So this one, uh, the first checklist was related to the project and there is a personal one as well. So basically what I'm doing here is writing new things. And that's it, or removing new things. And as you've probably seen, I didn't touch the mouse. I, and I can just do these amazing things with just a couple of hotkeys. And uh, th that is really easy. So if we would be working in the concept of the project, and that's the one, let's get to the checklist. You would basically set it all, all up and you would be also able to transform them into some issues. Set up remote development workflows in the team. And how to do it. So you basically break it down, you get all, all of those items here, and then when you are done, you probably want to convert them to more uh, granular things, which are issues. And that is exactly what can be done just with a single click from the, uh, from the checklist, and you can even assign them to Christiana. Wow, that's 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 really cool. Now we have uh, the actionable plan, and we also have a um, a list of tasks that we need to complete. Um, just one question here: Can we visualize uh, the set of issues or the process in some way to better understand where we are now and uh, what's the current state and what's our progress? Oh yeah, sure. So uh, first of all, of course, like creating the issue is not the only thing you can do and you should do. So you, you can go into the full issue view and explore what is happening and probably schedule it for uh, 13 of June or put some tags. Test tag, let's test something and do the parent issue. So a lot of things are possible. And in addition to that, what we can do in regards to the uh, visualization is project overview. That is a board, which is just normal scrum board and uh, we can navigate just there and you would be able to see all the issues on the different stages and of course it is very much configurable so you can see all the owners the description to share it with the peers and of course you can uh, configure the columns so for example the issue status statuses would be uh, um, dedicated to specific columns and uh, that is going to give you a very nice overview of the uh, project work and you can do the filters and see other, other things as well. So for example, I can see the issues created only by me or only by Hadi, which are none in this case. Cool, cool. And one more question uh, I have for you. Uh, what about the personal task management? I normally have tons on various activities on my plate and have absolutely no way to manage them effectively. Um, can space help me here? Oh yeah, actually it, it definitely can help you here as well because you envision space as the central path of your daily world, of your daily work or daily routine. And you basically would work with space to organize your workday and uh, whatever you want to do, you can basically log it in space and you can work with it in space or via some extension. So in regards to personal to-do lists, for example, and the personal checklists, you can get all of those things here. So for example, uh, if I need to work on this issue today or some other day, I can just go and click on this one. Issue has been added to the to-do list. And that's exactly what happened. You've probably seen that now I have six 
and I have this task of setting up the remote development workflows in the team. And I can actually create a meeting or issue out of that or postpone until 16th of June because we still do have some time and you can navigate and see what is happening. And of course you can, uh, you can log basically anything here just as a text or star some issues on the blog post or even messages in space. Cool, that would definitely help me. I hope so. <laughs> um, it looks like now we've got the plan, we've got the checklist and the actual uh, set of issues. And I guess we are ready to start the actual software development process. Where do we start from? Yeah, so generally you, all, you always would start with the repository. So um, and the project work would be, uh, well, the work would be generally organized as a, as a project um, and even if it's a product it's, you still would have this like contained space where you work with different entities so that is the project blossom we're exploring and in this regards uh, of, of course it does include a lot of different entities as a part of that so you dedicate the team to work on that and you basically um, kind of follow the development pipeline so we've gone through the planning and then we basically go to the repositories and that's where we keep our code so uh, we can create the repository just as a um, new repository without any code, and it's going to be initialized. And we're talking about the full fetched Git hosting inside space, and you can definitely create your repository and work with it and it initialize. But of course, you might have some um, existing code which you've been working on before migrating to space, and that you can migrate or, for example, do the um, synchronization with any Git, Git repository out there, or you can do even the GitHub mirror. For example, we use GitHub mirror a lot for the open source projects. So you can basically host this Git repositories in space, and then we um, mirror back to GitHub some of the parts of the products or projects so that they're available as open source. So we create the repository, and uh, then it basically gives you the full patch to your, um, um, re repository and the Git whatever you would expect from it. Like you can see all the files and uh, you, you can even edit them if you like. Well, of course it's less, it's less convenient compared to, um, compared to JetBrains IDs, but uh, that is the way for you to do some quick fixes. And you can see all the changes. You can see all the, um, all, all the stuff which has been happening in uh, the Git repository. You can see the diff, let's make it bigger. Like you can get the unified or split diff just to see what the changes are, what the differences are, and um, navigate through the repository generally as, as you would do that in more or less any of the um, Git repository. And um, you, of course, can clone it in your ID, and uh, you can also manage quite, quite a lot of things here. So for example, mirroring, get some stats, and, um, and, and some other things. So is that what you had in mind, Valerie? Uh, yeah, yeah, but I have one more question for you. I know that uh, in the more than collaborative world, writing code is not a solo process. Uh, it's very important to share knowledge and collect feedback uh, between the team members. So what about the code review processes? Uh, can we organize it in space? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure thing. So as you work with the, those Git repositories in space, you can, of course, go ahead and work on the code reviews here as the next level of your pipeline. So what you do, you plan, you code, you submit your code to the repository, and then you basically ask your colleagues to get the code review. And in our case, we have one code review open, and that is uh, about one of the issues in the project Blossom, first pass of at creating the API. And uh, we can see that there are some reviewers suggested, and we just join the review, and we can of course, see what, what is happening. And um, anyone can create the um, reviews. So normal workflow would be that you just push something to the repository and then you create the review for the, uh, for the bunch of commits or changes or a branch. And then you assign it to, uh, to some folks like, like that new code review. And then you need somebody else to review that. And we see that Ariane is on the key on the business trip. So Matthias is probably gonna be a uh, very, um, very good candidate. So then it basically moves to the state of the waiting for the reviewer and the reviewer would go and look at the comments and then um, 
provide you the feedback. Or of course, you can just discuss that in the comments of the code review at any time and figure out what are the what are the issues, what are the changes, um, if something has to be done here, and you can even write the commands uh, on, on the code right here. Well, thank you, Misha. Uh, I have one more question. I'm thinking about building a process of committing uh, code to the main branch. And it might be useful to set up some automatic uh, rules and checks for the code before it gets merged. Can we do that in space? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So that, that's quite a popular request, by the way, because you really want to preserve the quality and, and of your main branch. And you really want to be careful because uh, a lot of people and a lot of companies set up the automatic, like fully automatic or almost automatic process of deployments to the production. And that means that you need to be really careful about your main branch, because uh, if the deploy is triggered, then you can accidentally push something which you don't, don't want to push there and it might get broken and you need to wake up your uh, wake up your engineers or DevOps people. So what we can do in this regard is just in the repository settings, we can create the um, a couple of things. Uh, first, of all, uh, first of all, is that we can get the push restrictions Depend, depending on some of the uh, some of the uh, configurations, like only verify committer and Microsoft Windows compatibility, commit messages, compliance, and even some forbidden files if you don't want them to um, uh, to submit some of the some of the files. For example, the uh, keys, like the SSH keys or some of the secrets. An additional thing, uh, which is specifically about the main, uh, the branches and uh, branch protections is the quality gates and you can set up the rules. So in our case, that's gonna be wildcard, uh, which is gonna be uh, for all of these patterns. And you basically can say that push there is available only for the project administrator, which is a group of the, um, a group of the um, members which you can configure. And then you can also create the quality gates for merge requests because there are basically two ways of um, going through this process. First of all, is that you basically create a code review, and then the person who initiated the code review gets the feedback that's okay. All the code review passed. You can now merge that into the main branch or some other branch which you're going to then put to the production or somewhere else. And there is another way you can basically create the set of criteria. For the uh, for the merge request, so as soon as the criteria are fulfilled, the merge request is merged into the branch you want it to be merged. So, for example, you can require the approval from the code owners, and you can specify specific people, or you can use the configuration file in the in the repository, or you can require some of the jobs to pass, like build and publish container, or some warm ups, or even uh, configure some external checks. So, all of that would basically let you keep your uh, quality of the main branch or some other branches you want to protect uh, much smoother uh, than it would be without that. And you can really tailor the development process so that you can create those automatic or semi-automatic uh, procedures of the deployments uh, to staging and production. Thank you, Misha. That's very helpful. Uh, however, I know that the developers for my team, they write their code in the JetBrains IDs. And uh, do they need to switch to the space UI to perform code reviews, that doesn't look very user friendly. Is there oh, yeah. any well, other options? Yeah, that, that would be probably too much to ask the developers to switch to the um, online based tool to the to space right away and uh, get them from the context of the code. Because obviously, well, the integrated development environment is called integrated because you try to do as much of work you can do in the ID. You, you don't want to go away, you don't want to go just based online to do that. So what we have is IntelliJ IDM in our case. And um, there is, of course, the space plugin, which is bundled for a couple of persons already. And we connect to our uh, JetBrains space instance. And there are a few things we can do. First of all, of course, uh, we have this knowledge of the Git repositories, because I, I shown you all this information, all this information about the projects. And you can get the information about them here. And you can clone in just it was actually two clicks. I want to say in single clicks, but no, it's just two clicks. One is choose that and choose the project and, and basically clone. And that is one workflow you can follow. And another one is, of course, the code reviews, because you really want to review the code uh, in the ID as a developer, because 
otherwise uh, you lose the context. So um, here we can see the code reviews. This is the one which had been created uh, some time ago. Yeah, let's go to this one. And we can see the communication. So we, as exactly in a way that you can communicate in space, you can write your comments and information in the uh, here in the ID and it's going to be passed to space and posted to the comments of this uh, dedicated review. And then of course you can see what is the comments and just using the ID ID mechanics, you, you can see the diff, uh, you can see the files which have been affected and uh, you can even create the merge request and code review right from the ID. So all of that is possible and you can even post the comments uh, on the code and, and it's gonna go uh, to your developers um, asking for the review and of course you can discuss. So yeah, you don't need to leave the ID in order to work on the code reviews and, and all those things. So your developers can, can be very safe about that and not leaving the ID other. Yeah, thank you. I think that that would definitely work for my team. Um, however, I'm thinking that uh, we are a completely new startup and we don't, don't have those cool Apple M1 laptops yet. Yet, I guess we need a lot of resources as we have very GPU heavy database uh, computations for the galactic travels forecast. Apart from that, we are quite concerned about the security of our code and data as it will be running on the orbit and the redeployment is a complicated process. I've heard about the new remote development workflows. Is it something which can help us here? Oh. Yeah, that, that, that is like really top notch. So you're really following the news on the market because that is something we added just recently. Um, I, I think at the end of, yeah, that was end of the last year. We had a big release for the remote development as a workflow introduced to all the JetBrains IDs and also to space as an orchestration uh, solution of those, of, of those development environments. So the idea is that you would have the ID backends running somewhere in the cloud in our space, uh, in our in our case, in space. So space would be running the ID backend, and you would be connected to that. How is it achieved? So we are still in the concept on in the context of the project, and we have this this thing called uh, development environments or dev environments. And in my case, I already have the pre-configured one, um, which is uh, for the main branch. Let me. Let me start it up because it, it takes um, a bit of time to warm it up. And I'll explain you what is happening um, right now. So basically, this is the development environment and uh, Space is gonna prepare a special machine uh, in, inside Space Automation Engine or Compute Engine. And uh, it's, it's getting started. And, and basically, it will run this backend for you. How is it achieved? So you just go ahead and you choose the uh, repository, which you're going to be working with, because well, if you want to work with a specific repository, you want to check out this repository and you want to start up the machine, which is going to be working with that. So uh, you can go with the uh, different types of machines, regular, large, or extra large, depending on what you're working on. And then of course you're gonna you're gonna choose the ID which you want to work with. In my case, that is IntelliJ idea, and I can choose different versions, and I can even choose the warm up warm-up snapshots. So what are the warm-up snapshots? It is a very interesting concept um, for the um, development environments running in the cloud that imagine that you're working with a, a lot of data or with some very specific a big code base or a code base which requires some special configuration. And um, you can basically warm up the development environments in the cloud every morning before the developer starts working. That means that they can just go to work and instead of work waiting for, let's say, like 30 minutes to check out all the code and um, and get all this information and uh, get the ID started, they can just go ahead, click um, connect to the ID and start working. And that means that before the developer starts working, we can create the warm-up profile. And that is what we do exactly here. So the warm-up profile is, uh, for example, the Gradle, um, just uh, checking out some stuff and then running the Gradle uh, uh, Gradle uh, update and and then it's going to update all the dependencies and get the project model started for you. So that lets you start with a new environment in the morning and it's um, it, it really gets you a um, very nice feeling of clean and fresh environment. 
So when I run the uh, development environment here, it's basically starting, and we can see all the all the steps, and uh, it's basically running in the cloud now. Even though it does take a couple of uh, a couple of minutes on this run because it was hibernated for some time. So uh, when I clicked open in Gateway, Gateway is a special application which is basically running the uh, ID for you. Uh, so in my case, it's going to be IntelliJ ID. And let's hope that it's going to take us maybe a minute more and uh, it, it's going to start um, yeah, just because we need to warm, warm up all, all of those uh, things in the cloud. So um, that means that as soon as it is started, I'm going to be connected from the uh, front end in, on my computer, which is JetBrains Gateway, to the uh, to, to the back end, which is run by Space. Okay, let's let's see. So while it's connecting, let me probably show you where you can get uh, more information about the remote development, and that is the JetBrains remote development uh, landing page, and that is definitely a really new thing. And I would probably show you the diagram how it works. So we have JetBrains ID or gateway, which is connecting to the remote server, which is managed by space. And this thing, oh, connection closed, sorry. Well, that's a demo. So oh, as usual, something is happening. So let's try again. Open gateway, let's hope. Let's hope it's gonna work. Yes, yes, go for it, go for it, yes. OK, so now it's launching. It's on my local computer. I'm just going to have the front end. And the back end is fully running in space remotely. So you will see the ID, and it's very, it will be like very local experience. So basically, everything you will see here, it's the local interface connecting to the remote back end. And that is a newly, start, newly started environment. And that means that everything I do in the ID is actually happening in the remote container on the server side. And I, I can do a bunch of things. So for example, I can just go ahead and run my SQL, which is going to run it remotely on this server. And uh, it's going it's to start it there. And I, I got my project. And I can navigate. I can go, I can go for the code. And that's fully functional ID with all the navigation and so on. So it's basically uh, achieved through the special protocol and uh, you get the ID working with this backend. So very useful in terms of security, very useful in terms of uh, working with big code bases and also very useful in terms of saving money on the resources because you don't need to buy a very uh, powerful laptop. So you, you can just rent some uh, machines from the cloud provider and then you create those development environments managed by space and um, that is it. Uh, you connect there and your employees work with that. I hope that it's going to save some costs for you, Valerie. Yeah, thank you, Misha. I think that uh, that will, will be very useful for us and uh, that will help us to uh, save some costs, of course, and also speed up our development and help us with onboarding, as I expect that we are uh, going, uh, will be growing um, fast as a team. So, yeah, that's that's really helpful. Uh, so, okay, I think that now we've got the process of collaborating coding and the place to keep and share our code base. And what about the next step? Now we need to set up testing and uh, CI CD process, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, what you do as the next step is okay, you plant, you build something, some folks reviewed your code, and then you merge it into the main branch, and then you basically need to build it. So. In our case, we have a fully uh, functional CI CD solution inside space, and uh, that is called Space Automations. And in our case, the configuration for the year, uh, for the builds um, is done in the uh, special .space .kts file, and that is the Space Automations um, directive. So it's like their domain-specific language or DSL, which you can write here or in the IDE and then submit it to the repository. And then it's picked up by uh, space, and uh, then you can run the jobs. So in our case, for example, it's building and publishing booking service container, which tells space that it needs to run the container with the following resources, and then do their deployments, 
and run Maven package and start the SQL service and so on. So we, we have a bunch of jobs I described here. You basically uh, you basically scrape them and then you run. And of course, you get like all the overview of what is happening. You get all the information on the steps performed and all the uh, all the details in, in what is happening. You set the parameters in the configuration and, and so on. Uh, so basically, uh, you can, of course, configure those jobs to be run um, on, on cron. So just depending on some time. Um, this is the example. Then we schedule it, start on cron. We can also schedule it on get. And that is basically uh, the way how jobs work. And uh, in this case, they are performed on the um, on the hosted, uh, like space hosted uh, runners. And they basically do whatever you need to build and whatever you need to run. And um, that is how jobs work. But of course, there are a lot of aspects to that. We would not go into too much detail. There is actually a dedicated webinar on the automation which we had, I think, a year ago. So if you want to learn more about that, uh, probably I would refer you there. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm thinking about one more use case. What if I'm a part of the cloud vendor startup program and have some infrastructure set up for me, let's say in the IBS or Google Cloud? Can I use space with my own infrastructure for CI CD? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So there is a feature which is called the external workers. I, I would not go into detail for right now, but basically you use your own infrastructure and you connect it to space uh, and they would basically work as agents for the automation. So you would order those external workers for the automation to, uh, to do the job for you. And yeah, that, that's it. You can definitely do that. Thank you. Thank you. That's very helpful. And one more thing. What about managing and publishing artifacts? Can I do that in space? Oh, yeah, sure. So uh, as the uh, next step in your software development pipeline after building, you actually have some artifacts, let it be containers or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So for that, we do have the packages functionality. And that is where you push. So containers is basically similar to the Docker container registry. But this one is hosted in space. And it, it can be private or public. And uh, you basically push the, your uh, Docker images here. And of course, you get all this information, the configuration and layers, and so on. And then there is support for Python and uh, Composer, just a file repository for general purpose files, Maven, Nugget for .NET, and NPM. So that is what you, what you get here in space. And you can, of course, uh, just push those packages and make them available for your customers or for being deployed somewhere further. And in order to do the deployments, there is the deployment functionality. Deployments is a part of automation. And basically, that is, um, I, I, I think, I actually shown it uh, here. So deployments are a specific part of the script, um, which would be right here. So start the deployments. Uh, we just reference that in the in in the code of the uh, job, and that tells us that we need to uh, just go and do their deployment as of this um, it, deployment identifier, booking service staff, and this is exactly the one. Um, we can configure it for the specific repository. We can even set up a way to uh, push the information about the deployment, like when it started, when it's finished when it's failed or succeeded so that it's pushed to a specific uh, channel of the chats within space. And uh, in, in, in that way, we can basically configure the last pieces of the pipeline to deploy some containers to, uh, to the cloud provider or stuff like that. Thank you. Thank you. I think that uh, it looks like the whole development pipeline is covered for my project now. However, I've got the team, and we need um, the tools to manage uh, meetings, absences, vacation, our roles and permissions, and share knowledge. And we need to chat, of course. Uh, can space help us with this part? Well, yeah. Uh, we try to cover a lot of things you need to do your job. And as a startup founder, so you, you probably realize that you don't want to spend a lot of time to uh, choose these like 10 tools and, and then try to connect them. Like choosing them, not a, not even such a big problem. But then you need to go ahead and connect them together so that you can reference uh, reference some of the bills in the 
uh, messages in the messenger or so something like that. So space tries to remove this uh, problem of uh, any to um, connect so many so many things, and that's why we have a lot of things which relate not only to the, your developer pipeline but also to how you operate as a team. So, for example, um, the first thing your new employees would probably start exploring when they join a new company is the your team directory. So, team directory is information about all the people on the team. For example, let's take Matilda. And Matilda works in accounting. We can see the teams. So you can see the um, location of the office, we can see the calendar, and we can see all the contact details. And uh, that is very convenient because that is the way how you explore the team and uh, the structure of the company. You can see who is on the team and what is the team schedule and, and all these things. And um, of course, the next step would be to learn what is, com what is happening in the company. And for that, we have the internal blogs and events as well so for example this intergalactic meetup which is happening and uh, there is a call for speakers so that is blog post where your employees can go comments and of course they can publish their own blog posts about whatever they want to share with the entire company and as i've been saying before by the way you can add all of those to their to the and then, of course, mark those as completed as well when you read them. So you can share the information, you can find the people, and then, of course, you found that there is an Atlas app demo, and you probably want to talk with some of the people on the team. So let's see, in the software development team, we do have Heather, and I have some questions. That brings us to the chats. So space is generally very uh, chat-centric. So all the features we've shown, all the parts of the development pipeline are going to be delivering the notifications for you in space chats so that you have one single entry point where you see everything which has been happening. And that, of course, is a place where you can communicate to your colleagues. So right here, you can communicate with Heather. And um, here, you can, of course, go and search for things. Like we can look for Muffin, the, uh, the office doc, and we can just go and talk to the office doc. Or we can see the year space box with all the updates which have been happening. That that is like some approvals for absences or blocks or uh, something like that. Channels, general space updates, or even the automation service updates, which just sent you notifications about failing and uh, succeeding um, builds in in the jobs. And that is one of the examples of the code review. You you see that that it's basically all can be resolved in the context of the chat as well. So that's how the chats work. And of course, you, they basically do, do the job. You can talk to your, uh, to your colleagues. But sometimes the chat is not enough. And in this case, you can go ahead and uh, create the meeting. And um, you can just schedule the, your synchronization. That is going to be probably tomorrow. And I need Hadi and that actually knows when are we uh, busy. So you have a daily stand up and it tells us whether we are available or not. And if you're in the offices, you can also add the rooms and it's gonna be suggesting the rooms automatically, the ones which are closer to you. So you can basically create the meetings and um, of, of course, then you can go and talk to your uh, peers in person. So that is that is on the, on the meeting sites. And I think I already mentioned the absences. Basically, uh, you can see the your status for the people you know, on your teams, and you can submit the your status in the in space, and they can be approved by managers, edited, and so on. So very convenient when we are just scattered all around the world and working remotely, just to know where your folks are and how to work with them today, whether you can bother them or not. And because space is such an integrated thing. We are going to use this knowledge everywhere we can. Like here, we see that the year um, Ariane is on vacation. Or if we try to create an issue um, and assign it to Ariane in one of the projects, we would basically uh, understand uh, later on that uh, he, it will be shown on the issue that right now he's on vacation and we should probably not ex expect it to be done until he's back. So yeah, that that is how it works in terms of the um, in, in terms of all these things uh, on the team directory and working with the team.
that should really help you speed up the communication process as you start the project and as you communicate in the context of your software development project, regardless of the number of people on the team you have. Thank you, Misha. Uh, it looks like space uh, can cover most uh, of the parts of my workflow. However, we still have other tools, uh, for example, like Figma and some accounting tools. Uh, can we extend space to integrate with more tools from our infrastructure? Yep, generally there are quite a few things which can be uh, configured in space in terms of the customizations. Uh, so let me probably give a sneak peek of what is here. And uh, first of all, of course, you can go with some of the um, permissions and uh, different types of um, permissions you can give to, you, to your employees. You can, um, of course, configure different authentication modules, let's say with Google or with GitHub. And uh, then you can start customizing space with, their, with some custom fields, which are working in the memberships, member profiles, absences, and teams. So you basically create the um, create those custom fields, and then you can um, you, you can fill them out for uh, different employees. The same goes for the issues. You can create some of the some of the custom fields there just to cover uh, functionality uh, which you need to add there, like report the time or report some additional types of issues or anything like that. Um, so that is the first type of customization you can have. In addition to that, we have extensions. And uh, there is a very extensive uh, API playground where you can, of course, uh, more or less see all everything as an API, which you can see in space. So there, are, you can work with organization, you can work with projects, uh, tags, and so on. So uh, you can just uh, use this API to work with space in in a very easy way and um, just use your programming skills and skills of your developers to um, to build applications working this space. But of course, you can also pre-install the existing applications. And uh, the marketplace for, the, for those is coming very soon to the market. So right now, you would need to configure them on your own. But generally, you create the um, application. And after that, you can um, get it authorized, get the tokens or SSH keys, and um, configure web hooks, endpoints, and so on. There are like a lot of different things you can do here. And I would not even start probably with there are different, uh, different ways to customize um, settings of space because there are a lot of things you can generally customize. And hmm, I guess that that basically brings us to the most of the features of space I wanted to show you, Valerie. And um, I guess that we had a good journey and uh, you can probably see that space is covering almost the entire development pipeline and even more, to be honest, so that you can organize the work on your startup um, just in space and, of course, connecting some of the external tools if you like. And it plays very well with the JetBrains IDs as well, so your developers definitely don't need to switch to uh, just the space interface. They can do that uh, from within the ID as well. So with that, I guess that uh, we need to get you from the role of a successful startup founder back to the PMM role and just zoom out and ask you, what did you learn today? To tell us, can you tell us in a nutshell, what did you learn and how space can be useful for the startup founders? Thank you, Misha. Yeah, I'm gonna switch my head and uh, I'm gonna play the role of space product marketing manager again. So uh, what we learned today, space is a complete platform for software development. And it also integrates with wide range of tools um, and the, it, it, it's mostly integrated with um, JetBrains IDs uh, that allows to support the complete uh, process of software development. Uh, also, it provides a lot of extensibility uh, possibilities, so it can be built in um, into different uh, types of infrastructure and uh, it can support a lot of different workflows. Also, just a second. Um, yeah, how uh, how actually space uh, can help startups? Uh, so uh, if we try to summarize the problem that as a, a fresh startup, I need 
multiple tools to cover my software development process and also collaboration workflows. And of course, we've got integrations, but um, integrations uh, don't always work properly and it requires resources and time to set up and maintain. And uh, also sometimes they're not secure and uh, not convenient uh, to maintain all those tools. And also uh, it might be a pretty, uh, co uh, pretty expensive uh, solution to actually pay for all those tools. So Space can help here as a single integrated platform that combines basically all the tools that a startup needs to uh, actually launch and to work on their project and also to collaborate effectively. Uh, so we can say that space is an all-in-one solution um, for project, uh, for software projects in teams. Um, to visualize it um, in a very uh, high level uh, way, uh, we can say that uh, first of all, space is focused around uh, software development pipeline. So it provides all the tools that software development teams requires to uh, start and work on their project and maintain it, of course. So what do we have here? We have planning tools, we have documents, and we have issues for project management and for planning. Then uh, we've got Git hosting for uh, hosting our repositories and the actual code base. Then we've got code reviews, and uh, it's also integrated with IDs, and we can perform code reviews uh, directly from the IDs without switching to space. In terms of testing and uh, CI CD processes, we've got automation in space, and we also have packages that allows us to publish uh, artifacts that we've got and uh, share them with the customers or internally. And also space provides the set of collaboration and team management tools. So if you look at that uh, set of tools, uh, we can see uh, that to manage our teams, space provides, uh, of course, team membership and uh, the, the actual company structure. Then it, it has locations and maps, and it helps you to manage all the permissions and roles in a single place that covers all the tools that I've just mentioned. Also, uh, it allows us to manage uh, absences and vacations and um, manage our meetings and calendars. And um, what is the really important for us, uh, it uh, has built in chats. That is a central place for all the notifications that uh, you get inside the whole system. And Space also has blocks uh, for sharing the knowledge and news inside your company. And there is one more thing, which is extensibility, and it's, it's pretty huge and uh, uh, provides a lot of possibilities to actually integrate space into your infrastructure and other tools that uh, you might have. And Misha has covered that part, so I won't go into the details here. Uh, space also provides uh, uh, mobile applications and desktop application. So uh, whenever uh, you are, uh, you can uh, check what's happening inside your space and, um, I don't know, reply uh, to the comments, uh, even reply to the code reviews and uh, read the documents or comment on the issues. Um, how can you actually use space? So we have uh, two versions. Uh, first of all, it's Space Cloud. Uh, that's the hosted version that JetBrains take care of hosting and maintains using the AVS uh, servers. And the second option is on-premises. Uh, that's where customer actually takes care of the hosting uh, in their cloud or local infrastructure. Uh, On-premises version is uh, currently in private EP, and we're planning to open the public beta uh, by the end of uh, second quarter of 2022. So it's actually coming very soon, so please stay tuned to our news. Uh, both editions are subscription-based and charge per user, um, and we're planning to publish the pricing for on-premises version with the public uh, beta release as well. At the moment, we've got uh, cloud pricing available, and uh, we have uh, four different editions. And it starts with the free plan. Uh, it has some limited resources uh, that are provided with the, each of the plan. And also, the plans are uh, limited by the set of 
features uh, that you have inside the, the plan. Uh, we believe that uh, organization plan is the optimal for the uh, company that are using space at least for several teams. Uh, but for the startups, uh, we believe that free plan is a very good start and uh, it can be um, good enough for a while to actually uh, manage all the processes that we just showed to you. Uh, however, it's not it. We've got um, a special startup startup offer, as I already mentioned, in terms of space. Um, we suggest using a free plan here, and you can see the limitations. And um, I would say that most of the features are available uh, in the free plan. Uh, so if you haven't uh, tried space yet and you are just starting to work on your project, so you are absolutely uh, welcome to go and just your organization and get the free plan automatically. Uh, also, if you are using other JetBrains products, uh, which are uh, useful to any startup as well, uh, we've got a special offer that's a 50% startup discount that allows to buy up to 10 licenses for JetBrains IDs and other team tools and um, use them for over five year period. And here is the link to um, apply for our startup program. And actually, that's uh, not it. Uh, we also recently have released the incubators uh, program, and it provides uh, several benefits for the startups that are the part of this incubator program. And in terms of space, uh, it allows you to upgrade to the next uh, paid plan and get it get this upgrade free for up to six months. So if you are part of incubator and um, you are not yet in our incubators program here is the link uh, to apply and get all those uh, goodies that you can see on my screen and finally uh, we've got a special offer for you that's going to be a surprise uh, so for all everyone who has joined uh, for this startup webinar uh, we'll send you some special offer in several days I guess that's it, and that's a good time for uh, your questions. I'm actually seeing that there are quite a lot of questions already answered by our colleagues. Thanks a lot for monitoring the chat, but there are quite some questions I see which are left to us with you, Valerie. Do you want to do you want to ask the first one? Uh, yeah, the first one, I think it's about uh, uh, standalone or on-premises version of space. Can I self-host self space so I don't have a limit on workflow minutes? Almost, almost there. Uh, so basically, we are testing the uh, space on-premises early access program right now. And very soon, it's going to be launched as a as a actual like beta program for the year uh, space on-premises. So that should happen this summer, so stay tuned very soon. And then you can basically run it on your on-premises uh, hardware or your own cloud cloud um, uh, rented hardware or virtualized environments. And yeah, then there is basically no, no limits on what you can run because you basically own the hardware. Um, the next question is about uh, dev environments. Uh, so do the dev environments also support projects spread over multiple repositories or repositories that are outside of the project? So out of the box, not right now, not yet. Uh, we are thinking about adding that in the future. So for the repository feature outside of the project, you can basically very easily mirror that first to the project and then connect them to the remote developments. Uh, but yeah, right now it's basically one repository per the dev environment. Uh, but well, at least on the space orchestration side, of course, from the ID side, you can do some magic as well, or you can like you can do that after the environment is prepared. But space right now would work with a single repository, but that's something that I've been working on and want to address in the future. Because yeah, definitely you you want to do that. Uh, are there Mac and Windows backends? I, th I guess so. We're I, about I guess the it's environment. yeah, uh, yeah. Not not yet. Working on that uh, soon. Uh, yeah, should be available right now. Right now, it's uh, Linux backends, and uh, I think it's also not possible right now to use the external workers for that. But soon, also, it's going to be available for remote development. Yeah. 
Also, one, question, one more question about remote uh, development. Is the actual IDE uh, UI running on the remote server? It feels like the UI lags in this demo, like maybe it's using projector and sending draw comments from the server. Oh, that, that's a very good question. Thank you. Um, if I may see my screen on the, on the stream, that would be very useful to show you something. So yeah, let's hope that that's like, because I might show and, and there is going to be lag in the presentation, but actually there isn't. So if I type, you might really see that uh, something is happening and that is almost instant. The same goes for the, uh, for the completion. Like I type, well, sorry, there is like debugging information here, but uh, yeah, something is happening and uh, you get all this completion and so on. So it's almost instant. How do we basically achieve that? A lot of things happening right now in, inside the IDE, they are um, like all the UI, most of the UI is local. So it's not projected from the remote server, but there is a text-based, uh, quite complicated protocol, which basically, uh, which basically connects, uh, connects the, uh, my front end to the back end. And of course there is a bit of latency, uh, but it, it works. So the key component is, Typing, that is the place where latency really matters. Typing happens locally and then there is an optimistic update and then of course it's sent to the backend to update what is happening there. So a lot of things you see, they are actually happening locally, passed through the protocol and then returned through the protocol back. There are some things which actually don't make much sense to do as a protocol. For example, I don't know, the plugin settings or the uh, all all these settings for the key map because there are there are like a lot of things which would need to be added to the protocol and that is something where latency doesn't matter much. In these cases, we would actually use projector as a technology to project some of the swing interface back to my computer here. But yeah, at least for the typing and a lot of the tool windows where the refactoring matters, it, it is all done through the protocol and that's actually swift. If you don't see that on the presentation because maybe there is some lag with the YouTube translations or something like that, then just go ahead and try Gateway. It's really smooth in terms of the latency. Um, yeah. I see that the remote development is really a hot topic today. <laughs> One more question about it. Is. How do things like local branches and stashes work with dev environments? Do they just get lost at the start of the day? Oh, good question. So uh, generally, it depends on how do you build your work. Uh, so you can work with the uh, permanent environments, like you can, for example, create the dev environment and then um, don't destroy that generally. Uh, and um, you always work in a single one, which works for a lot of customers, but uh, don't really follow, it doesn't really follow this like new modern way of the uh, non-permanent environments. So in this case, you basically have a dedicated machine, which is run by space and the environment is hibernated. So every night it is hibernated and you can just um, unsuspend it in the morning and, and that's it. You can still run some things there, but of course you don't destroy that like so that your stashes and uh, all this stuff is not gone. And, and um, probably the example with the short living, um, short living VMs for the remote development is, is not ideal if, if it's like, if we actually set it destroyed every day, probably it's not destroyed every day, it's destroyed after you're done. So let's say you're working on the feature and there is a, some uh, development cycle, let's say 10 days. So you create created a new dev environment, you warmed it up, you work with it, you are done, you committed the changes, then you can destroy that. If you're not done yet, you just hibernate and then actually gonna self hibernate in half an hour. If you don't use the IDE to connect to it and then you continue working with that. So it, it's really up to you how to you configure your warmups. It depends on uh, your workflow and workflow of your team. So it's not necessarily have to be destroyed. Yeah, that's how it works. Thank you, Misha. Um, one more thing about remote development again. Is there a web version uh, available uh, for remote development? Uh, because our employees might connect from different devices and might need a web only version. Uh, so right now there is no web version. Uh, generally, if you mean different devices by different laptops, then gateway is a good way to do that because in fact, what I've shown you 
right now with that, with an ID, for example, connecting to space, in no single point of time, the source code has been checked out on my local computer. So I can actually take any computer, connect to this backend, remote backend, and remote dev environment, and work with it, close the laptop, and there is no code there. So if that's what you mean by different machines, then uh, it works perfectly well, If or different devices. If you mean like iPad or uh, iPhone, then uh, this workflow is not yet supported, but I know that there are some teams looking into that. And the fully web version of the IDs of JetBrains is not available. You can definitely do some of the editing right in space just using the web editor. Uh, but of course, it wouldn't provide you all this like completion and suggestions and so on, which would be available in the JetBrains IDs. Thank you, Misha. Uh, let's switch to some other topics from the remote development. I think we're planning a dedicated uh, webinar about uh, remote development sometime. In I future. hope so. So, so many questions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, yeah, we definitely should. And uh, yeah, just uh, please stay tuned. We'll, we'll get something about this topic. Um, let's go to different uh to another topics um like uh let's talk about external collaborators uh, with respect to external collaborators how will that work one thing i'm looking for if we can support lots of uh um, users who join a chat use it for a day and then leave without uh with easy sign out sign out i guess um and ideally no extra charges uh for customer support and uh, etc um, what yeah, so generally, yeah, generally, so what we want to do about external external collaborators is to create a way so that they are added to specific projects because you probably want them in the context of the project. And then they would be available within this project only. So they would be able to communicate with the folks on the project and they will be able to see the project artifacts and so on. Of course, depending on the permissions set there. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, that, that is a general idea that you add them as co external collaborators to the project. You work with them after you are done with them. You basically uh, remove them from the project. If they uh, are not in any other project, then they, are not, they cannot uh, use your space organization anymore. In terms of e extra chargers, um, I cannot answer that at this moment. We are figuring out how would that look like on the space side. Uh, so right now, the um, technical solution for the external collaborators is mostly ready. It's being tested, but we don't we don't know about the actual launch date and the if there are going to be any charges uh, or not. So stay tuned. We should be able to update you very soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Misha. Um, maybe a little word about deployment in space. I guess we covered the topic, uh, but maybe. Uh... Yeah, uh, well, I can generally say that you can deploy more or less whatever like wherever you like, because uh, the uh, you can use the jobs and space optimization DSL to connect to different uh, tools or package services, repositories, or uh, like, I don't know, but anywhere really. And uh, behind this DSL, which is a Kotlin-based DSL, there is Kotlin, so you can actually run the code or you can run any scripts uh, you put into the repository. Uh, so with those, you basically can create uh, deployments you need. So if there is any specific question of what kind of deployments and like um, describe your use case, should it probably to our support, uh, space support, and we will be glad to look into that. But generally, yeah, whatever you can describe in the script or in Kotlin, uh, we will be able to deploy. Mm -hmm. uh, one more question about uh, Git hosting. Is your goal to replace the need to interact directly with GitHub, Bitbucket, or whatever hosting uh, you're currently using and only use space? Oh, that, that is a good question. So it really depends on your workflow. You can use space and you can replace GitLab and GitHub or Bitbucket with, the, uh, with space in those regards, but you don't have to. Like if you want to work with two tools or if you want to, for example, use the Git repository in GitHub and take advantage of some other tools of space, you generally can because you just mirror this repository one-to-one -one and then all this space magic is going to work for you. You don't necessarily need to move out of GitHub to do that, for example. So uh, there, there is this like extensibility in the business sense that uh, you, you can go ahead and use those, um, you use those tools one next next to another so there, there is no ultimate goal to actually replace 
all the tools uh, because if you have some tools, if you use them, if you like them, it's better to integrate with them rather than push you towards replacing them, right? So uh, for us, extensibility is actually a very important topic and we try to make space more extensible so that if you have some tools, you can just um, plug them into space and use those um, uh, simultaneously. So I, I guess that with the Git hosting, that's the easiest use case because you, you can mirror and you, you can basically uh, work with that uh, in, in quite convenient way already. For some other parts of space, that's we are not yet there. For example, for the calendars, uh, there, there was a question I've seen about the Google calendars and integration with it. Um, it's coming. We are not yet there because ideally you would want to have Google calendars integrated with their space and maybe synchronized and all those things. But uh, yeah, this one is not uh, yet on the market. Yeah, thank you, Misha. Uh, we've got uh, one more question um, about project management. Um, how can space be used as a project management tool? For example, project planning, agile development, and working with design and business teams on requirements. I think I can handle uh, this question. Um, yes, please. So I, I, I would say that uh, if you're planning to use space only as a project management tool, then um, I would suggest uh, another alternative by JetBrains, which is Utrack. That's a dedicated project management tool. And in terms of uh, set uh, the fee of the features um, that uh, it, 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 it offers, um, Utrack is uh, way more rich uh, than uh, space uh, capabilities of uh, project management at the moment. Uh, however, if you are using uh, space for your uh, development pipeline, as we demonstrated today, um, then project management is a part of this pipeline, and we are moving towards uh, the support of the standard workflows of the uh, development um, workflows, uh, and uh, we are working on um, uh, working and planning a lot of uh, features in our project management modules uh, that would help you to better manage uh, the whole process of uh, the development. So if we're talking about uh, the process of uh, project management and working with design and business teams as a part of, uh, again, software development process, that's of course possible in space. And uh, I believe that we are partially covered uh, this scenario of uh, like high level planning, then breaking uh, down um, this uh, high level vision into more uh, manageable and uh, actionable checklists and then converting them to issues and then doing a standard like issue tracking uh, procedure with um, agile boards and uh, reports and then tracking. Uh, reports are not, uh, uh, I mean, not a lot of uh, types of reports are uh, already implemented in space, but uh, we recently released the metrics report and and we provide an option to export uh, your issues in CSV format, then you can uh, process them um, and visualize in some other way. And of course, we are working on uh, some more features in terms of project management. Thank you, Valerie. And as you're talking about the project management, uh, we have one more perfect question to answer. How does Utrecht play with space? Yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks. That's that's a very good uh, that's a very good question. I've already touched that a little bit. So if we're talking about um, project pure project management and issue tracking functionality, then uh, that's definitely you track. If we're talking about uh, more integrated and complicated process, then we suggest looking for space. And at the moment, uh, we are working on the integration between space and you track and um, uh, some of the integration is already there. For example, you uh, track supports uh, integration with um, uh, with GitHub and GitLab that allows you to actually connect uh, your uh, commits uh, with the actual issue and uh, also space as a git hosting is already supported there and that's just one example of the of this integration and uh, we are going to cover uh, other scenarios as well and we're working on them uh, so yeah we see a, a good scenario of using uh, space and u track uh, together uh, as integrated tools, and it makes sense uh, because uh, these are all JetBrains uh, products, and uh, we have enough power to integrate them in proper way. Um, however, uh, we are planning to extend and um, 
who are putting a lot of efforts into uh, extending our own uh, project management and issue checking functionality inside space. So both use cases uh, should be valid and supported, and we are moving there. Thank you very much.